So how do you make this stick onto this in order to create a million dollar business with over 800 different products? We're gonna talk about that in this video today. So Chin Mounts is an excellent case study in how to use 3D printing to actually create a large business and to do it sustainably and in a really economic fashion. But before that, let's actually talk about the problem that they're trying to solve. This is the issue. There's about a half million motorcycles sold each year inside the United States. And there's somewhere between five and eight million registered motorcycles at any given time. And within the motorcycling subculture, you have a real big group of fans who love action cams. And it's very useful on TikTok and all the rest of it to share your rides. But there is a problem. In order to get a GoPro mounted onto your motorcycle, historically, you've always had kind of the option of mounting it up here on top or mounting it on the side. Both of these sort of suck because they mess with your airflow and create a bunch of drag on your head as you're going down the street. So the very best way of mounting a camera is straight on the front of the chin. Now, the issue with this is that every single motorcycle helmet is a little bit different right here. They have a different curvature because they're styled, they're designed, they have different aerodynamic properties, whatever the motorcycle brand that you're using, whether it's a Bell or HJC or whatever, which means that you have a problem mounting onto it. Because if you create an accessory that perfectly fits with this helmet, it will not perfectly fit with some other helmet. So if you are wanting to solve this problem, you basically need an accessory to mount this camera onto the chin of every single motorcycle helmet out there. And there are a lot, but there is a technology that's able to do this. This all brings us up to Matthew Englidge, who in 2019 had this problem. How do you mount a GoPro to the front of a helmet and do it reliably across multiple different helmets? Englidge was able to design an initial mount and use his home 3D printer in order to create the first version of it, basically scanning or reverse engineering the chin of a helmet in order to design the first chin plate. He was able to share it around, get a little bit of attention, and ended up starting to sell them. And this is where it started to break loose. Other riders loved it. And in a niche that is so focused and so loved and so has such a passionate group of people inside of it, if you have a product that works really well there, it's going to get attention and it's gonna be shared and there's gonna be word of mouth going around all over the place. So after the release of the first design, Englidge decided to keep on creating more designs. And this is a really nifty business model because effectively what you can do is you can purchase the helmet, 3D scan it, design the plate from that scan, and then send the helmet back in order to create a lot of these variations, which allows you to create a bunch of accessories that cannot be produced any other way. This is something that is unique to 3D printing. Historically, if Engelage wanted to do this, he would have had to create a mold for every single helmet that was out there, which means that he would have had a $10,000 expense before he would even get the first product out the door and then have that multiplied by what is now over 800 different products. 800 different molds at $10,000 a pop, he would have had to spend $8 million in order to create all the products that he is selling right now. $8 million you would have to earn back in order to just break even, but that's not even becoming profitable. That's just to break even on the startup cost, not including marketing and growth and buying more machinery and so on and so forth and shipping and packing, blah, 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 all this stuff. But all of that cost was zero because he was using printing. But there have been several clever business model tweaks that Chin Mounts has used in order to make 3D printing even more scalable. And we'll talk about them in just a second, but I wanna emphasize what 3D printing was able to do for him. Engelage was had to build racks of 3D printers in order to produce this part, but it doesn't have to be done anymore. Here at Slant 3D, we recently released a product called Portals, where anyone who creates a model can just upload it and have it for sale in about 30 seconds. All you need is a 3D model, and then you find out how much it costs, you set the price, and then it is for sale, and you start making royalties from the sales of the real prints of that model. When a customer buys the item, it is printed in one of our giant print farms and then delivered directly to the customer for you. You do not have to do customer support. You don't have to deal with sales tax. You don't have to deal with shipping. You don't have to run a print farm. All you have to do is create a model and then upload it. If this had existed in 2019, Englidge would not have had to create his own printing infrastructure to run chin mounts. He could have just uploaded the model and shared it with his friends and then started uploading 800 more models and would have had all the infrastructure built out for him without having to build it himself. So if you are creating a nifty product or have designed some nifty little niche tool, you might consider uploading it to portals. That way you don't have to build all of the manufacturing infrastructure yourself. But let's get back to what Englidge actually did in order to make this scalable. Sure, they're using 3D printing, but people have a bad kind of connotation with 3D printing, even though it has all of these benefits. It is a thing that is mounted onto the chin with an expensive camera on the end of it. What if that 3D print breaks? Well, if you're designing the parts appropriately, it's not a problem at all. But even more than that, 
that, what Inglage was able to do is not 3D print the entire part. The only thing that matters was the base plate that mounts onto the helmet chin that needs that curvature. Everything else can be kind of standard parts. So what they did at Chin Mounts is that they designed that base plate, that mounting plate, but then they have third party parts that then interface with the camera and everything else that can be tensioned and torqued and twisted and change angles. But these have a tremendous advantage in that they're kind of off the shelf so that they can be produced really reliably, be universal across all the 800 SKUs of base plates, which allow them to interface with the helmet. And that allows you to have an upsell. A typical chin mount can generally go for somewhere between 35 and $60, which is kind of a lot, but also not. It's really useful. The GoPro costs somewhere between $200 and $500. The helmet also costs that, unless somebody's being an idiot and not taking care of their brains correctly. So in the context of the kit, you want the part to be right. And in fact, if it was priced like a 3D printed part where it was two cents or something like that, then it would appear cheap and people wouldn't purchase it or trust it. And chin mounts also wouldn't have the incentive to do a really good quality product. So it's important to maintain pricing where it's reasonable and sustainable and scalable. Because also there is a lot of upfront work that goes into the design of one of these things. Scanning a helmet and then turning it into a 3D printed model is not nothing. And people need to realize the amount of investment that still goes into creating one of these chin mounts when it might only sell maybe a few hundred or even a few thousand units over its lifetime. But what I want to emphasize with this is that the combination of 3D printed parts with third party parts allows the final product to be much more valuable than what it would be independently. If chin mounts just sold the base plates, they'd have some value there, but it wouldn't be a complete set. Since they're selling the complete set, they have the opportunity for upsells, the product becomes more valuable overall, and you have the benefits of 3D printing, which is able to create really custom features and connections with high numbers of SKUs combined with third party parts and universal pieces so that you can upsell and create real value from it by turning it into a full cohesive product experience. And this is obviously working for chin mounts. On their website, they have over 3000 great reviews. And if you reverse engineer reviews as in about one out of 10 people will offer a review generally on average, then you're looking at about 30,000 total orders. So it's turned into a real solid business that Matt English has been able to grow over the last few years and can continue to grow. Action sports are a huge market with really passionate people. They have and can and are expanding into all these other places where camera needs to be mounted to some weird curved surface. And it's really difficult to get that done with traditional methods. But 3D printing allows you to create a large number of SKUs that can be stored and chased down the long tail of designs so that you have a custom accessory to an existing loved brand to allow people to get a better experience out of all of it together. And that allows you to create something really high value that's very profitable and can still be produced at scale using 3D printing. It's awesome to see these types of products out there. Comment down below if you know of other real world 3D printed parts that people don't really realize are 3D printed. It was awesome looking into chin mounts because yes, they're 3D printed, but it's not like an obvious or front forward part of the site. It's an enabling technology to what they're creating. And this is something we always love to talk about on the channel. Have a great day, everybody.